This is the Pico Gear Pico Mic 2 Pro wireless system. The most interesting mic system I've come across so far and just might be the wireless mic system you've been looking for. The major components of the system is the Pico Mic 2 Pro and the Pico Stream wireless receiver. You get two Pico Mic 2 Pros in the kit and one Pico Stream wireless receiver. There are some other components which we'll be talking about a little later in this video. But first, let's talk about the Pico Mic 2 Pro's quality and setup configuration. Here is how the Pico Mic 2 Pro sounds directly out of the microphone without any audio processing. I have one mic positioned on my collar and one mic positioned in my sternum. I find that it sounds better near the sternum than it does near the collar. Let me know which sounds better to you. I find that it sounds better near the sternum, but it could sound better here to you. Just let me know which way sounds better to you. Now with this setup, I can have one mic coming into the left and one mic coming into the right. And that is how I am testing out this audio for you to hear. Now I'm gonna leave this set up the way it is throughout this entire video. And I'm gonna switch back and forth through left and right, just to give you a, a sound, you know, give you samples of how it sounds based on the position. And I'll indicate which microphone I am using somewhere near the bottom of the screen. When it comes to broadcast quality, the Pico Mic 2 Pro has 24-bit, 48 kilohertz audio sampling. It connects over the same frequency as Wi-Fi at 2.4 gigahertz, which is a standard frequency range. So there may be some cases where you pick up some interference, but make sure you are monitoring your audio when you are out shooting. There's really no way you can monitor if you are solo shooting. So my advice is to listen through each clip when the audio is pertinent after you're done shooting and in case you wanna reshoot. Maybe I should rephrase that. You can monitor the audio as you were talking, but you'd have to wear the headphones and take them off in order to monitor your audio, but I would still say double check it to make sure you're not clipping or there's any interference just to save you some heavy lifting on the back end. Now the receiver and the transmitters have 200 millimeter range of wireless connectivity translated into feet. They're 656 feet of range. And when it comes to battery life, according to the website, you can have up to 20 hours of uninterrupted audio streaming. The Pico Mic 2 Pros have built-in digital limiters to help with peaking. They aren't great, but they aren't bad, and they're better than not having any at all. The limiters are a great feature because most camera mic preamps tend to run hot, but with the limiter and the transmitters, plus the ability to set the audio levels of your audio within the Pico Stream, you can get your audio levels just right without having to do too much processing on the back end. And I'll be talking about the Pico Stream a little later. But I wanted to highlight it here because I had to learn the hard way when recording with the Pico system. In the past, I've heard some interference and hissing noise on the high end, which can be hard to get rid of. So make sure you are tweaking the levels of your camera and the Pico Stream to cut down on the interference so you won't have to struggle with editing down your audio too much in post. The Pico Mic 2 Pro is pretty small compared to the other wireless mic transmitters I've seen on the market. This is the entire microphone, but when you clip it to the talent, it looks like a pin clip. So if you are someone who wear pocket shirts, then when you clip it to your pocket, it will look like you're carrying a pin. Now, how I like to wear the mic is when I'm wearing a coat that has button loops, I can slide the mic right into the button loop and it looks like this. The mic is small, compact, discreet, and high quality. When I'm outside, I prefer to use a shotgun mic with a wind muff. I use this setup if I know I'll be at least three feet away from the mic, and if it is a windy day. But if you're outside and you wanna use the Pico Mic 2 Pro, then you can attach this little wind muff mohawk right here and you are all good. Either setup will work, you will get better audio quality out of the Pico Mic 2 Pro due to the fact that it's attached to your person. But when it comes to positioning, having the mic close to your collar might cause your audio to sound a bit muffled. You want your mic to be somewhere near your sternum right here, but I would say play around with the positioning until the audio sounds good to you. Basically use the Pico Mic 2 Pro if you know you'll be moving around a lot and you will not be directly positioned in front of the shotgun mic. And if you do not want to go for the news reporter look with the umbilical cord. Now the audio coming off the Pico Mic 2 Pro needs little to no processing on the back end. The audio is clear mainly due to the reason of where you would typically position the receiver compared to where you would put a shotgun mic. Unless you run an extended three millimeter jack from the camera to the shotgun mic and talk into the shotgun mic like a news reporter. You can also run a three millimeter jack from the Pico Mic 2 Pro to a shotgun mic in case you do want to use a shotgun mic like a news reporter without the umbilical cord. With or without some back end processing, you will be pleased with the audio quality of the Pico Mic 2 Pro. The Pico Stream is equipped with a digital interface, five navigational buttons, two ports for two Pico Mic 2 Pros, 
two three millimeter jacks for headphone monitoring and audio out, a micro USB charging port, and a one fourth millimeter thread on the back of the system to attach it to your camera or camera rig. As you can see, the entire system isn't that compact compared to some of the other systems out there on the market. It is quite bulky. However, the entire system includes two ports for the two PicoMic 2 Pros plus the interface. So the entire system is all one. There's no separate charging case that holds the receiver and the microphones or the transmitters. It's all just one system. This also means you have dual connectivity and you can mic up to two people or use both mics on one person, set the transmitter at two different dB levels and have one as a backup safety track or a backup safety channel in the case there is some interference or issues with one of the mics and in the case of peaking. The digital interface isn't touch sensitive. You have to navigate the interface with the four of five of the main buttons. The top button is the power button. You have a selection button right here in the middle, two navigational buttons above and below the selection button to cycle through each section of the interface. And you have a back button. Once you get a hang of how to navigate the system, then you can quickly get to your settings in and out without any issue. On the interface, you have three sections. The top section is for mic one. The middle section is for mic two. The bottom section is for your audio assistant and headphone volume levels and settings. In section one and two, where you can see the mic levels, the battery level and the signal strength, this is where you can monitor each microphone and also click in to manage the dB levels of each microphone to get better audio. This is how it looks on top of my a7 IV when I do not have it completely rigged out for video. It looks similar to a shotgun mic when it comes to form factor here is a very small transmitter on top of the a7 IV and you can see that there are some smaller ones compared to this huge bulky system but the pico stream is an entire system here's what it looks like when i have the a7 IV completely rigged out in my wireless configuration when it comes to this setup i feel it fits right in it makes the rig look a little more streamlined and high tech in the eyes of the client it also adds more weight to the rig which is always good when shooting handheld. Now, when it comes to monitoring your audio, I would recommend checking the audio levels on both the Pico stream and the camera because of one issue I've had in the past where there was some high pitched humming and hissing on the high end. I will be running some tests to test that out in a future video, so subscribe for that one. Also, for some reason, Transmitter One had an issue where the audio levels was extremely low. So I factory reset the entire system, unpaired the mic, repaired it, but the issue was still there. I reached out to Pico Gear, they responded right away. They sent out a new receiver but there is a workaround if you do experience this issue. And that workaround is you wanna completely discharge the battery in the Pico mic that is having the issue, like completely drain it. Like just leave it on, let the battery die, and then recharge it and the issue will go away. Now the Pico Gear wireless mic system is a phenomenal system. And any question, comments, or anything you have, do let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for joining, liking, subscribing, and staying awesome. Stay awesome.